What's up guys, how you doing? Thank you very much for checking out the video and welcome back to Colorcraft Bushcraft. This is your first time here. My name's Alex and this channel is all about my journey learning and developing bushcraft skills through camping, hiking and generally spending some time outdoors. Uh, in today's video I want to tell you about a really cool two day hiking and wild camping trip that I've got coming up in the next week. I'll run you through uh, the route that I'm going to take, I'll show you it on the map. Uh, I'll show you the gear that I'm going to be taking and I'm also going to try putting up my brand new tent for the very first time ever. So I really hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. Alright, so as I'm sure you guys are aware, um, the only place that you can legally wild camp in England without landowner's permission is uh, parts of the Dartmoor National Park, so that's where I'm going. I'm going to spend two days, uh, one night, hanging about the Fernworthy Forest area. Uh, the route that I found is about nine and a half miles on each day, so it's about 19 miles in total. That may change depending upon how much time I've got on each day. Uh, I may go further afield and explore a bit more, but, but we'll see. Uh, but the route I found is actually on a really cool app called um, Kamut, uh, which I will show you uh, now. He says, waiting for it to start screen recording. So this is an app that I came across um, randomly. Uh, it's really cool for hikers uh, and cyclists and stuff like that. It shows you various different routes. Um, I found this online and managed to download it kind of straight to the app, which is absolutely brilliant. Uh, as you can see here on my profile, you can plan all kinds of different routes. I have two planned at the moment, which is this two parts of the, uh, the Fen Fernworthy sorry, loop that I'm gonna be doing. Uh, it's brilliant, you can connect with all kinds of different people, as you'll see I have no followers and, and not following anybody <laughs> because I've only just started it. Uh, but it's really cool uh, and you can do uh, all kinds of different routes, there's a discover bit here where you can look at various different bits of the country uh, and it's absolutely brilliant so I'm going to be using this a lot more in the future to find new routes and new hiking trails that I haven't done before so I'm really looking forward to getting uh, more involved in using this app a bit more. I'll stop doing that now. Um, but anyway, uh, I found that, I thought it was really cool, so that's the route that I'm going to do. Um, I'll tell you what, I will move the camera and I'll put the camera over the map and then I'll actually show you the route that I'm going to take and point out some of the bits that I think are going to be really cool. Okay, so I'm going to start here at Postbridge and I'm going to come along this footpath up here towards the forest. Um, there's a couple of cool things around on this trail to have a look at. Um, particularly here, the grey weathers stone circle is something that I'm really interested in checking out. I think that looks really cool from the pictures that I've seen. I'm going to go up to the top of Sitford Tor here to um, have a look at the sights and, make, and have a look at the view. Hopefully the weather will be nice. Uh, once I've done that, we'll come back down. Uh, I'm going to make my way up here. Uh, and instead of turning right into the forest where this footpath leads, I'm actually going to keep on going and I'm going to follow the river. And I actually want to come up here and check out Waterton, Water, Water and, Water and Tor. <coughs> Excuse me. I think it's called Water and Tor, I'm not sure. Um, I've read online in a couple of places that the views from the top of this are absolutely spectacular. Uh, the only issue I might have is that this piece of Dartmoor here is actually like a, a military zone where they test live fire ammunition and things like that, so I need to double check um, on the website and just make sure that they're not doing any testing that day. If they aren't, then I'll most definitely come to the top of this uh, and have a look around. If they are, then I'll have to rethink things, uh, but we shall see. Uh, and then given, depending upon what time of day is, I may carry on up, up the map and have a look at some other tours up here. Uh, or if it's too late and it's starting to get dark, I'm going to come back down, uh, cross the river. I'm going to come here, uh, I say river, I'm going to come here and I'm going to camp at a place called Shovel Down which is uh, an old settlement site. So my hope is that there will be old stone walls and stuff like that, that I can set my uh, tent up um, and shelter from the wind and stuff that way. So I'll camp there on the first night, uh, first night, the only night, I'll camp there. And then in the morning, uh, or at least the second day, the plan is to come back through this away, come through the forest, check out the reservoir, maybe go around the reservoir, come back out the forest, maybe hit the Tour Moors way and can come back down and come back into Post Bridge that way. So as I say, it's about 19 miles in total, which is not a huge slog, you know, it's nine and a half miles on both days, which isn't a huge amount by, uh, by any stretch of the imagination. The only thing that might slow me down slightly may be the terrain itself once I leave the path, but uh, as I say, I'm not overly worried about it, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So, that's the route I'm taking. The next thing I'm going to do is just very quickly run you through the gear that I'm going to take with me. Uh, I'm trying to keep it to a minimum, you know, this isn't a bushcraft camp where I need loads of wood processing tools or anything like that. Uh, it's quite a simple, you know, hike, camp, hike again. So my, uh, my main points of concern are my shelter um, for the evening and clothing. The weather on Dartmoor can be very, very changeable. You know, one minute it's sunny and the next it's peeing it down. 
Um, I have had a look at the weather and it's supposed to be fairly decent on both days. Slight chance of rain on Friday, but you know what? I don't trust the weather app, so I'm going to make sure I'm prepared. So uh, I'll put the map away and, uh, and I'll get the gear that I'm going to take with me and I'll show you that. All right, gear load out time. So, uh, as always, um, <laughs> I'm going to be taking my hidden woodsman forest ruck, which is 30 litres. Um, I love this pack, it is brilliant. If you want more information about it, go check out the Hidden Woodsman or go and watch one of my previous videos where I've done a gear load out because I've talked about it. Anyway, 30 litre pack, so everything that I'm taking needs to be fitting in there. Um, so in terms of food preparation, um, I'm going to take the smaller of my boy, the smaller of my billy cans. I'm going to take my uh, TBS or the Bushcraft Store 500ml billy can. Um, as I said, we're only there for one night, so I don't need huge amounts of food, so that should do me fine. Um, given where we're going, um, we are not supposed to have um, sort of proper open fires, uh, and you know, given where I am, it's going to be moorland. You know, there's not going to be loads of dead standing wood around for me to be able to harvest. So in terms of cooking food, um, I'm going to be taking a little, um, just a bog standard butane gas uh, camping stove with me that I've just ordered off the internet. It's nothing special. I haven't used it before, so I do need to have a little bit of a play with it um, before we go, but I don't envisage any, any problems. It's all quite small. Like they, this bit comes apart and then the gas canister goes in here. Uh, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. And then here's a little stand for it as well that opens out. So it's nice and stable. If I had it the right way around, that would help. So it's nice and stable. And then that bit just screws in there. Uh, and then, hey, presto, camping stove. Um, I don't know if all of like this bit is necessary. I need, as I say, I need to have a play with it and find out if I actually need to take all of these little bits and pieces. If I can avoid taking any of it, I will. Uh, but based on what I can see, I think I'm gonna have to take at least that with me. Anyway, that's, uh, so that's for food prep, so that's fine. Um, I've always, as always, I've got my little uh, knife, fork and spoon set, which uh, comes in this cool little pouch, so I can just attach that to my belt, so it doesn't need to be in my bag the entire time, which is nice and helpful. Uh, and that'll be cooking. So for water purification, drinking water, um, I'm gonna take my water to go bottle with me with a fresh filter in it. Um, these are fantastic bits of kit. Again, I've talked about them in um, previous videos, um, but it means that the rivers and stuff that we come across, um, I can safely drink out of them. Uh, these bottles do have a slight limitation in that it's, of course, only the water that goes inside it that gets filtered. So if you just fill it up like from a stream, just like with a scoop, you've got the unfiltered water all over the outside of it. And if you then drink, you can still um, drink the unfiltered water, which may not be great for you. But anyway, I still think it's a, a very, very good product. So I'm going to take this with me. I may also take a two litre bottle of um, water from home. that's already filtered and everything, um, mainly for cooking at the end. So I don't have to try and squeeze filtered water out or wait for it to boil before adding food and stuff like that. I haven't decided if I'm going to do that, but that seems like a sensible plan as well. So I may have a, a two litre bottle of water with me uh, as well. Anyway, um, I've just got a plastic bag and I've started taking um, plastic, just an, an empty plastic bag, just like a Tesco carry bag with me uh, whenever I go out, just in case, um, well, A for my own rubbish, but also in case I find other people have left um, stuff around as happens far too often. So at least I'll be able to take it with me. So yeah, it's just a plastic bag. Uh, the only knife that I'm going to take um, is my little Wenger uh, or Wenger um, sort of very small uh, Swiss Army knife. Uh, I'm not taking a big uh, bushcraft bladed article with me uh, because I don't need one. Um, other than that, I've got gloves um, as always for handling hot things and for a little bit of warmth if I need it. Uh, I'm going to take my cookser with me to drink uh, tea, coffee, soup out of, etc, etc. Uh, I'm going to take a headlamp. Uh, for the evening with some spare batteries. Uh, this is a really good um, headlamp, just got it from Amazon, it's called Pathfinder, does the job. Uh, I will always be taking my first aid kit with me, just in case, you never know, you may fall over, get a scrape, whatever, it's good to have. Uh, I'll take my bog standard little lovely pink sit pad with me for a tiny bit of comfort in the evening. Um, in here, this is kind of my Postles pouch, EDC Postles pouch, so in this I have things like a little towel, um, I've got my compass, I've got hand sanitizer, I've got bug spray, I've got a space blanket, excuse me, I've got wet wipes, I've got a little torch, and I've got a lighter for the gas stove, so that'll be coming with me as well. 
Um, and of course I will be taking my map with me um, as well. Actually the, the app that I mentioned, the, the Komoot, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but whatever. That app, um, it works a little bit like Google Maps in that when you start actually doing your trip, um, it navigates for you uh, if you want it to. Uh, of course, I don't want to rely on that because the phone may die or whatever, so proper old school map uh, is what we're taking. So that's that kind of bog standard stuff. We're now on to um, sleeping gear. So as always, I'm going to take my little mountain warehouse travel pillow with me, which packs down nice and small. I'm going to be taking my sleeping pad, my blow-up sleeping pad. I may put this in its actual carry case and fold it down a bit smaller, I haven't decided yet. Uh, my sleeping bag, I'm going to take my Mountain Warehouse Microlite 1400. Um, this, apparently, its comfort temperature, comfort temperature is down to about minus 11. Uh, whether or not I believe that remains to be seen. Um, but where we're going, as I said before, I have had a look at the weather and it's I think the night time's only supposed to go down to about 4 degrees, something like that, so it's not something that I'm worried about. This will keep me exceptionally warm. I may even swap this out for my for my three season bag, which may be a little bit lighter, I haven't decided yet. But anyway, sleeping bag. Now, this is the interesting part. Uh, this is my brand new uh, one-man Berghaus Peak 3.1 tent. Um, last time I went to Dartmoor, which uh, I did actually film, but I don't know if, it depends how long you guys have been watching my channel. Uh, but I did actually film it all and then something went wrong with the editing and I managed to lose all of my footage which was really upsetting. Um, but uh, last time I went I only took a tarp with me and when we slept over I made a tarp tent. Uh, which was absolutely fine on the first night, it worked brilliantly. Uh, but then on the second night uh, when it got really really windy uh, and really really, uh, really really rainy, really really rainy, uh, it just collapsed sort of three or four times and it, uh, it really annoyed me. So this time, to avoid that, I thought I would take a tent instead. Um, as I showed you on the map at uh, the place we're going to be camping, it is uh, an old settlement, settlement site, so hopefully there'll be stuff to uh, shelter me from the wind and stuff, as well as, as, well as the tent. Um, but anyway, uh, I bought this the other day. Um, it was, to be fair, the reason I bought this one is because it was the only one-man tent that they had in the shop. But I looked at the specifications and it seems like it's going to be long enough for me. Um, the inside uh, vestibule thing, or the actual sleeping compartment if you like, is supposed to be 215 centimetres long I think it is, and I'm 190. So it should be just enough room. Um, but I've never set this up before and as any experienced camper or backpacker, wild camper will know, it's always good to test out your kit before you go. Everything else I've pretty much tried, bar the gas stove, which I'm not worried about at all. Um, I have used them in the past, but the tent I have never set up before. So I think it is a very, very, very good idea to get outside and set it up and see how, see how it all works and how long it's going to take me. So let's do it. Let's get outside and let's set up my new tent. Whoop, whoop. Take you inside. All right, not too shabby. Got plenty of room in here. I mean, it's a little tight on my head, but you know, for a one-man tent, you can't expect too much. So I'm pretty happy with this. 
Didn't take me a huge amount of time to set up there, um, but it was a little bit of a learning curve figuring out how it all goes together. So I'm going to take it down and put it up a few more times just to, to practice and see if I can get it done quickly. Um, the bottom sheet, I have to say, doesn't feel particularly insulated. Like I can really feel the feel the wet earth beneath it. So I'm definitely um, definitely going to take the sleeping pad. I'll need that to keep me off the ground, which I know that everybody knows that anyway, but I'm just saying. But yeah, happy with that. Got a cool little venti window thing here. Woo! Nice little mesh, little bug net. I like it, very happy. All right, so all in all, really happy with my uh, tent purchase. Um, the colour's a bit garish, but I quite like that. Um, as you can see, I like red anyway, so uh, I think that's pretty cool. Um, I do like that there's like a little vestibule here for me to put my wet hiking boots so they don't have to come into the tent with me. I've got enough room inside I think for my gear and my backpack as well so all in all I'm very very happy. We'll just have to see how she stands up to the wind and the rain um, on Dartmoor. Um, so that's it guys I'm going to end this video here. Thank you very very much for watching I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, as always you know particularly if you want to if you want to see the uh, Dartmoor trip make sure that you hit subscribe hit the bell to stay notified of when I put out new videos and I shall see you very very soon from the Dartmoor National Park. Take care guys.